Let's explore VGG network in this lecture, which is a more advanced convolutional neural network. So first, let's have a quick recall over AlexNet and Lina. Fundamentally, AlexNet improved upon Lina by adding more layers, larger kernel size on the convolutional layers, and more neurons on the dense layers. So how do we improve from AlexNet? Shall we go to build even bigger and deeper neural net? So here is a detailed calculation of how many parameters does each layer have in AlexNet. As we can see, AlexNet has around 62 million parameters or weights, and over 90% of them are coming from the last three dense layer or the fully connected layers. Hence, it will be too computational expensive to add more dense layers. However, more convolutional layers won't hurt. So probably we can add more convolutional layers. So one of the choice is just duplicate the similar layer structures in the block. And then we can stack the block to the deeper neural network. That is the idea of VGG net and VGG blocks. So the full name of VGG is Very Deep Convolutional Neural Network. However, people now usually call it VGG because it is short for the Visual Geometric Group from University of Oxford where this paper is coming from. Here, the structure of VGG following AlexNet has an input image with size of 224 by 224 by 3, and all convolution layers are using ReLU activation function. Other than that, there are some more differences. Unlike AlexNet, VGG has a structure that is very straightforward and easy to read, which is the VGG block that we are going to introduce in the next slide. Finally, it uses a few fully connected layers for the last stage and the output. So in the middle of three plots, it's the VGG block as of its convolutional kernels are of size of three by three, which reduces the computational cost from the kernel five by five or even 11 by 11 in the AlexNet. And this is, and this is especially important in the deep structure. After two to three consecutive three by three convolutional layers, the VGG block uses a two by two max polling layers to reduce the size of the feature map. So VGG was the first successful model with a deep structure. Its popular structure variants have the number of layers from 11 to 19. Recall that AlexNet only has five convolutional layers, that is VGG indeed a breakthrough. However, such a deep structure raises an issue. If we take a detailed look of any deep neural net during training, the loss calculation occurs at the last layer, so they learn quickly. Well, the input data flows in from the beginning, which is the leftmost size of this illustration, and the data gets passed through the, to the right. So during the training, once the left layer change, everything afterwards is also changed. So that it means the last layer needs to relearn the parameters to suit the change of the input. So overall, this means a slow convergence in total. So can we avoid 
the changing last layers, we are learning the first layer. So one approach that gets popular is called batch normalization, or batch norm in short. It happens at each layer, and it normalizes these layers to input data. The intuition is to fix the mean and variance of the output from each convolutional layer. So ideally, the next layer can always see a normalized input and that may help convergence. To be specific, with the collected means and variance, the batch norm layer first normalizes each input value with the corresponding statistics. And next, it adjusts the scale of the normalized value with two learnable parameters, the gamma and the beta. In this way, the input and output is normalized and rescaled to the same mean and variance. So we can apply a batch norm layer after each layer, no matter it is a convolutional layer or a fully connected layer. And the main functionalities of batch norm is to stabilize training the weights within each mini batch. And in practice, the mini batch size can be 64, 128, 256, etc. And batch norm is widely used in practice. People often find that using batch norm indeed improves the VGG's accuracy on the ImageNet by a significant margin. If you would like to learn more about batch normalization, especially the math theory behind the scene, check the link for more details on the detail book.